Welcome to Drewski Drift, episode two of my webisode, vlog, whatever you want to call it. Um, <clears throat> today we have the differential getting welded. We're going to go to Spitfire. The guy's name is Kevin. He's a former Pro 2 driver, or Pro-Am driver, and uh, he's been drifting and, and welding for a while. So we're going to show you how to properly weld a diff, specifically for an R200 diff, which comes in most of the Nissan's um, S chassis. Um, we're also gonna do some harness installation in the C6 Corvette. Uh, it just had the factory seatbelt before and we are going to throw in a harness bar with some harnesses for now until we can get the cage done, which hopefully after talking with Kevin, um, he might be able to do that for us. So we're gonna go over that today. We talked a lot with him, a uh, very cool guy. Um, and then we have some other stuff for the Skyline as well. We have new wheels, which I might let you guys peek at. I don't have the tires mounted yet, so um, we've got some spacers with the new wheels that are going to get the fitment just right on there. It's going to look a lot better. The wheels are white instead of gold. Um, you can see we got a new front bumper on the Skyline as well. Um, I call it a new front bumper. It's the same bumper, but it is now finally painted. And we've got the grill on there. I might take the stickers off of the bash bar just to make it look cleaner. Um, but you can see the body kit looks pretty much completed with the exception of the fitment, which is being addressed. Overall, super happy with how this paint came out. Very recent paint job, still pretty fresh. You can see the wheel from before. Um, did not fit the kit, so that's what we're going to deal with. And then we'll get into the harness bar over here in the uh, C6 Corvette. And stay tuned for all of that. All right, so today's the day that we get the diff welded and we're gonna take it down to a guy in Longwood that I haven't used before. Um, he does cages and some other work as well. So we're gonna see about getting cage work done in the Corvette over there um, because I really wanna get it ready for clutch kickers. If I can do a couple rounds of that, um, that would be awesome. They've got a new layout every round this time and they're going out for um, Cletus McFarland's track out in the Freedom Factory, which it looks really awesome, but they do require a cage on track for um, clutch kickers this time. When it was previously at the Emerald Coast, they didn't require a cage um, because it was a much flatter, slower course. So understandable that they're requiring it, but puts a lot more work and money that we have to invest in order to be able to compete out there. So. For today, we're gonna get the welded diff going for the Skyline. We're gonna put it in the Back of the Skyline, drop the subframe, throw some 350Z axles on it so that it is a little bit more beefy in the rear. And then the ratio that we did in the first episode um, for the 4.9 gears is gonna work out a lot better so we can get to third gear. So I've got the diff already opened up, taken apart. All the gears are in there. Um, we just need to get these all welded in place and uh, then we can close it up, put our GK Tech cover on there and fill it up with fluid and then we'll be good to go and put it back in the car. So let's get this loaded up. And uh, we'll show you guys the process at the shop to show you where you need to weld your diff if you wanna weld your diff in the future. Um, what not to do, a lot of people end up putting the output shafts in the diff and welding them in place and then if something bolt breaks or snaps off or anything like that, then you're kind of screwed because you welded it in place, which is no bueno. So it's called Spitfire Fabrication is your shop? Yeah, Spitfire Fabrication. I, I figured like, I was gonna make cool name stuff. I was just like, no, I mean, that's all we're doing, welding. We're just spitting fire, so. Cool. Is that mostly what you do, is, is welding? Is that how it started out? Yeah, it, it kind of started out just doing like basic roll cages. Pretty much all I do in here is I do roll cages. Cool. Um, 
I mean, I'll do engine swaps. We actually got a... Um, yeah, we actually it. we actually looked at this um, <laughs> earlier, and this is a... I haven't really seen this swap before. This is really cool. So this is out of an Armada, I think you said. So yeah. Armada Nissan Titan. Um, Titan motor. Uh, you're doing a CD09, is that right? Yeah, it's already got the CD09 in it. The bell housing, or I'm sorry, the... Uh, the uh, housing itself on the RX-7 is really tight, so we had to cut and make some, some room for it. Um, but however, I mean, this thing is tight. It fits pretty well, especially with how the oil pan, it is a funky oil pan on these things because the sump is in the rear, and it's not just to the rear, but it's to the rear right. Interesting, okay, so I can actually see that from here where you have some sort of clearance issues going on. Um, yeah. Is it? It's very tall. It looks like actually. So. Oh, it gets even taller. Yeah. The well, well, yeah, because you have the uh, manifold there. to go up top. Yeah. So you're making custom mounts for this, obviously. That's your step right now. I like it. How long have you been doing cages again? You said like 15 years or something like that. Oh, well, so I've been in the drifting for 15 years. Okay. Uh, I got into cages after I worked at Titan Motorsports. That's where I kind of learned to make cages uh, through one of the guys there. After hours, he would just teach me how to weld, and I've been doing cages for about three to four years now, okay. but it's been constant. So, Because that's the first thing everyone asks is, oh, how many cages have you done? And I, I stopped counting, so <laughs> I feel like it's did it enough. Well, so I've got a Corvette in the garage that I want to get a cage done to, and I bought a cage from Cage Kits. Um, it's gonna come just in all the pieces, just like you have all the pipes over there. So we just got back from Spitfire, seeing Kevin, who welded the diff. Um, turned out to be a really cool shop. Um, glad we went over there and got that done, because it looks like he might be able to help me with the cage for the C6 Corvette, um, which I'm really excited about, because I was worried I wasn't going to be able to get it done in time uh, to do some of these competitions or just really have fun, and clutch kickers was my goal. Um, so we got the diff, which is all welded up, as you guys saw already, and I am going to fill it up with fluid, put the output shafts in, and throw it in the skyline and test it out, hopefully in the next video. For now, we're going back to the Corvette and we're going to be doing some harness bars and harnesses, which I already took the seat out. And you can see I've got the belts laid out in there. Um, taking the seat out is, is pretty simple. It already had a Sparco seat in there, so it's really just four bolts. Um, but this is something that really needs to be done right when you do it. Uh, mainly meaning that you need to have secure points of contacts for all the different straps. Um, this one is going straight to the seat bracket mount here, which attaches, this one's on sliders, so it attaches to the sliders. Um, then you have your other point of contact. It's going to mirror the same thing on the other side with this guy, and I'm using the included bolts. These are a um, snap-in style, so you can just put the bolt on the point of contact that you find best for your application. A lot of people end up using the mounts where they go directly into the chassis of the car itself. Some people like to use the seat mounts because if you attach it to the seat mounts and you're on sliders, um, your seatbelt stays the same no matter whether you're sliding it forward or back, as opposed to if you use your straps and bolt it directly to the car itself, you move your seat forward and the seatbelt will slack up instead of moving with the seat. So, different story for the crotch belt here, as I call it, crotch belt. This is really just meant to keep your harness um, in line, is what most of the manuals will tell you, but um, this will actually help you from submarining in the event, event of a crash, so you don't slide under your belt and do a bunch of damage to your lower intestines and all that fun stuff that would get hit by the lap belt going across. So this one is a little different because it's supposed to mount in the middle of the seat and go behind you at like a 20 degree angle. Obviously there's no mounting points that are there from factory. So what I'm gonna have to do is drill a hole as center as I can get it right in the um, seat bracket here and kind of measure the, the angle, make sure it fits right. But also the other point of concern is that this eyelet bolt would be in the way if we mounted it like that. So 
I'm either gonna have to come from underneath or what I might end up doing is taking this off and instead of having a snap-in, just have it mounted flat like that. Um, I'll come up with something, it'll work. I've done it a couple times. <clears throat> we'll see, we'll get there. Um, I've got this seat belt, um, excuse me, the harness bar bolted in until we can get a cage done. Um, this one was done by BMR, Bailey Mitchell. Does some awesome work. Um, this was in one of his other buddy's Corvettes, so it's been used, but it is a solid piece and it was a pain in the ass to get in the car. Basically, in order to get it in here, I had to take all these trim pieces off of here and then squish it in between the frame. Not the frame, but the chassis where it is all pinched together and then I had to hammer it in place to get it to actually sit. It goes where the factory seatbelt's attached, so I will not be able to run factory seatbelts with the harness, uh, which kind of sucks, because if you're street driving it and you get pulled over and you don't have your um, seatbelts that, that came with the car, then you can get a ticket for having aftermarket belts and not wearing the originals, so that's a risk we'll have to take here. Um, but yeah. Pretty cool. <clears throat> what else? These harnesses are from Bridge Moto. I really like their harnesses because A, they're nice and thick, super duty. Um, really soft though. So when it's sitting on here, it doesn't have any extra padding or anything like that. But the webbing, the nylon is just nice. Um, it's, it's flexible, it's strong, it kind of molds with your shoulders and forms to you. Some of those other guys have a really, really stiff um, structure to them. So they're just overall uncomfortable to wear while you're racing. Okay, so here's my solution for the crotch belt, what I call it. I don't know what the name is. I'm sure someone will correct me in the comments. So instead of having the eyelet bolt go directly to the um, seat bracket here and having a rod stick up, I've got this little extension. Um, this came with some previous Sparco seats that I had. So what I'm gonna do is basically drill this bolt through and the bolt will sit on top. And then this bolt is going to hold this in place. And then the um, this little piece is going to come forward at just the right amount of angle because this was a little too far back from the seat itself to be 20 degrees. And then basically we're gonna lose this and then this is gonna clip on directly to there. And I might might turn it, these are pretty bendable. So, or put another piece or whatever I have to do to make it work. Um, but that's gonna sit right at the right angle and should be exactly what we need it to do and be safe. Here's the final installation of the harness. Um, I went ahead and strapped these down to the harness bar the proper way. Um, I tied these up. A lot of people either put these through eyelets down to the factory seatbelt mounts or wherever they can get them, but um, we're just gonna tie them up. I think it's unnecessary to do that. Um, but these are very comfortable, nice and tight. I've got the uh, lap belt adjusted already, so all I have to do is just hop in, buckle it, and then strap these in and tighten it. Nice and tight, looks good. Way better than running a factory seat belt. Now for the next part, I wanted to show you the Skyline wheels, which I've mounted and installed. What do you guys think? It looks way better than the other wheels that before the kit and the paint. Uh, fitment's a lot better. Tires are a little meatier. 
These are by Square. This is the Monroe. Um, kind of unique design. It's a, a like a new age TE look, I guess. Um, mixed in with some work wheels. And I think they did a good job. My only complaint about these is that they are really heavy, um, especially running them in the fronts, but I had a hard time getting anything that matched the specs that I was looking for. So these seem to fit the bill pretty well. Um, I might have to lower it a little bit, close this gap in order to get it right where I want it, but that's for another day. Day one of OSW Spring Break Bash. People are already blowing up their mattresses. Everyone's getting their cars ready. A class just went out for the first time. Got Orlando Mobile Tire here. Doug's sleeping in his truck on the phone. We got the man hard at work. Yo! How's it going? What's up, dude? What, you don't have a million tires to replace uh, already? We had a rush like an hour ago. And uh, yeah, we're dead now. You gotta get some of these. You gotta save me a couple of these. I'm gonna need them tomorrow. All right, seriously? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Wes was over looking at them a little bit ago. Okay. And uh, we said, hey, if you don't get them, man, they're getting someone else's. These are Atsu. Who makes these again? Falcon. Falcon makes these. They're actually really nice. I've used them mm -hmm, a mm -hmm. few times. Um, they don't delaminate, nice even wear, pretty good tire. It's right in that Kenda range or a little less than Kenda. Um, right now, Kendas are ridiculously expensive, so I'm not buying those. Um, these guys are hooking it up with the tire installs right on track, which is really nice. Oh yeah, out beautiful here setup. You mind if I uh, Go for it, bro. poke in there real quick? Do that VIP treatment in there. Hell yeah. These guys have brand new equipment in here. I think they're gonna balance wheels for you. We've got a brand new mount. Got their own generator hooked up. They can come to you on the go. My man Doug here, owner, owner, operator, CEO, Orlando Mobile Tire. I like that. We come to you anywhere in Orlando. Anywhere in Orlando, stuck on the side of the road. Doug's gonna show up with this and many fine times equipment. Outside of Orlando. Yeah, outside Orlando too. <laughs> I, uh, I have these guys come to my house all the time to throw my tires on because I just don't have time to go to the shops and drop off eight tires with a truck or something like that. So they have, if not the same, but better equipment than most shops, really. That is newer oh, and yeah. nicer equipment than Absolutely. anything that I used to go to. If you go to a tires plus or something like that, it's all like 20 year old machines. So mm -hmm. really nice. Brand new Borgi stuff, Italian yeah. design stuff, rocks and rolls, this badass. Yeah, that's some fine equipment there for sure. Chris Rios has we the got meats. Speed up deli, you know what I'm saying? I got speed the up meats. deli. I thought yeah. that was Arby's. Arby's got the meats. Well, Arby's got the meats too, but we no, got it better. They stole it. We got a suit on. That's trademark. Chris Rios got the meats. I got the meat. How much you spend at Publix on all those meats? Two hundred thirty-two dollars. Two hundred and thirty-two dollars for three days of meat. The homies just for Vince to go get a hot dog. I didn't know if I was allowed to eat a. He goes to the concession know. stand. <laughs> Wait, you already went to the concession stand? I, I haven't eaten anything today, so yeah, I got a fucking hot he dog. I got yelled at us <laughs> with all this stuff, and he decides to go to the concession stand. Here's Miguel.
Spring Break Bash day three. Day two yesterday was the King of OSW competition. That was a lot of fun. Made it to semifinals with the vets. Um, so we won two rounds and then got beat out by Billy Mitchell, who is just a really, really good driver. I know him personally. He's a cool guy. He Actually, this is his um, harness bar that I installed in the Corvette. Came from him. So, um, But as you can see down here, someone gave us a little tap on the Corvette. They shattered the window inside. Um, not a, such a huge deal because this is all fiberglass. The only thing that I'm concerned about is the inside of the door in here. So I'm going to be real careful with that. But I'll clean it up and maybe put some Bondo and a Band-Aid on it or something like that. But overall, the Corvette's been driving really nice. Um, needs more angle for sure, but it is gripped up and I'm liking the feel of it. A lot of low end torque. Um, I was thinking about taking the T-top off and driving it like that, but I, then I got really sunburned and now I'm just trying to stay out of the sun, as you can tell by the hat. Um, other thing I wanted to mention is these tires that I'm running on here. Um, I just flipped them inside out, but the tread on here, I have been on these all weekend, the same set of tires. We haven't been hot lapping, so I can't really say as to whether they're gonna start chunking when we go out and hot lap. If I get any time today, since people are leaving, um, or I'm just doing repetitive laps, or maybe I'll go on the oval, then I'll do a, a more in-depth review of how they are wearing at that point. But these are Otani tires, 265, 35, 18s. Um, Otani, I looked them up, they're their own company, Thailand company, I got these for about 100 bucks each, um, which if you know what current Kenda prices, Grievas, any of the nice tires that used to be cheaper, um, this is a lot less expensive, and I would compare it to like, not quite as good as a Kenda, for sure, but consistent, very grippy, very happy with this uh, today, this weekend. Alex installed this brand new FDF kit, and he's having some issues. Um, apparently the spacer on his steering rack broke. Were you mid-drift? Yep. He was mid-drift. Threw it in entry, it locked, tried to pull back out of it, it straightened right out. Had to get towed? Uh, I actually drove it back. You on. drove it out? Oh, that's good. Yeah. Came back, fixed it, thought it was the arm, because we ripped out the threads out of the arm. So we got a new arm on there, huh? Slapped the new arm on there, took it back out for another run, realized the offset spacer was snapped. So it's been a fun weekend. But it's the trials and tribulations of a new kid, I guess. Lots of people are going FDF, which is what we have prepared to go on the vet as well. Um, super solid kits, but they do rely on Lots of threading to be put in place and everything to be mounted up to a certain spec so that it's not rubbing and angled the right way and everything that you would expect. But uh, sometimes you can't measure everything perfectly. So this one ripped out from the steering rack. Um, actually, the Skyline did this to me one time where I had the Wise Fab on there and the steering rack 
or I didn't have the bump stop set properly. So it ended up pulling too much tension on the steering rack and the bolt actually ripped out of the steering rack completely with the spacer and broke my steering rack. Um, and to fix that, I ended up having to just weld the spacer directly on there. So it's really solid now and I put the bump stops in the correct place afterwards, um, which is why it feels so good. But yeah, it's little stuff like that when you do these kits that you gotta think about and fix along the way. So that's why we have so many different knowledgeable people around. All right, so it's the third day at Spring Break Bash, and pretty much both my cars decided to break. We had Old Faithful. I had an SR in this thing for about 12 years, 11 years, untouched. I didn't have a failure in the SR due to the SR, like everybody likes to hate on, but it leaned out and I ate a plug. I got low compression on cylinder number one. So I'm probably gonna have to take it apart and I'll probably try changing the piston if the wall's not messed up. If the wall is messed up, I got one more block that had a rod knock. I'll just pull everything out, put everything from this one back in, possibly put my belt head on while I'm there, and then hopefully be back up to running with the least amount of money spent. And then my hatch, I don't know what it did. It just decided to shut off by itself. And it's been, it sat for a little bit, and then we went ahead and started it back up. And it's running good. Uh, my laptop's not, it's kind of acting weird. Don't really want to connect that great. I got on there, it didn't show any DTC, so I think it might've just got too hot and maybe shut off on its own. Hopefully that's all it is and it stays working. But if it shut off randomly, if it shuts off in drift, it's not gonna be good. So that's something I'm gonna have to watch out for later on. But the camel's good at one thing, it's breaking stuff and then fixing it. <laughs> <laughs> for real, garage, for real, working. for real. So it took a it took a lot of damage. Uh, Chrissy hit me here, 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 here. Battle. As you can see, my wheels all bent, but well, my suspension's bent. But she's this, a party car. This car gets it though, man. Uh, she's a party car. I started getting real comfortable with it, and uh, yeah, I don't know what's up with that weird shut off thing. But if you guys don't haven't seen Camel drive before, he's. Honestly, one of the most fun drivers I've ever driven with. He's really, I just really good. Try to have a lot of angle and style wide line. That's his YouTube camel style. I switched it to Kashad. But Kashad, I did, when you pull it up, it should still come up. I need to take that sticker off, you to be switch honest. switched it to cancel Kashad? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm about to put it on. I'll probably get more fucking more viral off of that than anything. So, camels, OSW grassroots to out in the compound. Yep. Out to the compound a lot. Um, just all over. I mean, you used to be yep. out every weekend pretty much. Yeah, right? yeah, compound, I used to go like every day almost and every weekend and then a lot of OSW. Like I did Clutch Kickers a little bit. Um, I did Team Vibes and West Palm Beach, so. You did OKC too? OKC, OKC as well too. OKC was sick. I, I like OKC. OKC. If you guys didn't uh, see the OKC track, it's a go-kart track. So it's real tight, very technical, very tight sections that where you slow down and then you got to speed up out of it. So. Uh, and it's like, it'll be like door to door, like the whole time have on the runs. Yeah. So it's, I wish they could bring it back. Yeah, OKC, okay, if you watch this, please bring it back. We want it. <laughs>